So we're pushing along for our uh, engine first start, everybody. Um, I'm actually gonna throw some gas in this thing, and what we're gonna do is uh, show you guys how to kind of make sure the fuel system's up to spec. Uh, we're gonna do this for two reasons. One, to make sure we have no leaks, and that it'll hold pressure. And another, I wanna flush any contaminants I might have in the line, since I made all those lines between all the braided lines, um, all the, the tubing I bent. You never know, I don't wanna have any pieces of metal get in there and end up uh, clogging up an injector. So I'll kinda of go through this episode. We'll dump in probably another, this is like two, little over two gallons, two gallons, eight ounces. Probably throw in another one of these uh, into the tank and then I'll run a uh, battery up to the tank, uh, the pump, and we'll just pump this thing. I'll show you how it's done just to clean out the system to make sure that nothing contaminates the engine. So I wanna make sure that first start, which I'm getting closely in, Another week or two, I'm thinking. Uh, once my son comes home, I'm not gonna start till then, and I gotta get some more wiring done. So as you can see in here, yeah, you can see I gotta get some wiring done. So thanks for checking in, thanks for watching. Uh, hit subscribe, and we'll kinda show you what I'm gonna do with the uh, fuel system here as far as getting it all cleaned up. So uh, we're gonna throw fuel in this for the very first time. This, by the way, is my uh, breather vent. Um, I'm gonna loop it up around this tube. I'll probably make some sort of fitting on there. Not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but uh, this way I don't have to worry about gas getting sloshed out of this thing. So I gotta untape this. I had this thing taped up pretty well. Didn't wanna get any dirt inside here. And there we go. Fuel's going in. Very first time. I do run premium, just so you know which the Coyote will run on regular, but if you get a tune for premium, I mean, the knock sensors, I think there's four actually in the Coyote, um, they will back off the timing and uh, keep the motor safe. So that's one of the nice things with this motor is you can run uh, regular fuel in it. But uh, I don't know, I in California, premium is now about, I think I just saw 470 a gallon. I know other places of the country, it's still cheaper, but Gas prices sure have skyrocketed in the last uh, month or two, and I'll bet you it's going to get worse. I'll bet you we'll see five bucks by you know, midsummer, if not earlier. So, so I'm going to run down. Uh, this is my biggest uh, portable gas tank I have. I think it's two two gallons, eight ounces. Definitely not enough. Um, I'll throw another two gallons plus in. That'll give me four in there. First thing I need to do. Um, I've now thrown. Tossed about four gallons of gas in the thing. So I'm gonna pull off my fuel tank cover here. It just gets to the uh, fuel pump. Cause I gotta run 12 volts to that pump. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire this thing up. Uh, I've got a little 12 volt inverter, uh, 110 to 12 volt. I'll wire this into, hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna have to find some plug that's gonna work. Cause I don't wanna tap into the harness just to run power to this pump. And I'm nowhere near, as you can see with all the wires inside the chassis, nowhere near with truly firing this thing up. Um, plus, I'd like to have the system kind of primed before we do it. That way this thing will fire up a little bit easier. And I may have to prime the pump um, also, so we'll see. So what I've done is I've cut the end off the butt connector, squeezed a little bit, so now it fits tight over the top of those prongs. So now I can now crimp the other side onto these and I've got myself a way to fire up that pump. So we'll strip the wire off the end of this, plug it in there. As a matter of fact, it's not gonna work. And hopefully we have no leaks. So let me get my voltmeter out and I'll plug this in. Set my voltmeter to 20 volts because I know this should be 12 on the output. So I'm going to plug it in up to here. I'm assuming the one with the white is the positive, but we'll see. I need a third hand here, don't I? Uh, well, the voltage is a little bit low. So I'm showing 11.22 volts. I may not even run that pump. We'll see. Yeah, so this is negative this way. 11.33 volts. So the positive one is the one with the white stripes. We know that. So let's uh, 
Let's go plug this thing in and see if it'll drive the pump. Okay, so if you guys can listen, um, I've actually got this thing working now. So I'm gonna run around. I don't smell any gas. So let's see what kind of pressure we're getting. I got nothing. So somewhere, I got a problem. Okay, so all these lines back up to go on the fuel pressure radiator were all loose. I didn't tighten any of them. Just fired up, thought I had tightened them all earlier, and I hadn't. So, screw up. So I got one more here to tighten, then we'll try this again. The lines are tightened up. I think all the gas is pretty well cleaned up. Not pretty. Um, okay, so let's give this one more shot here. As I said, I don't see any fuel come from anywhere else, so here we go. Okay, so I got 40 PSI of fuel pressure now. I got no leaks here. I'm not seeing any leaks anywhere else. I think we're good. I'm probably only getting 40 PSI because I don't think there's enough voltage to that pump. But let me try this. Uh, what the hell? Oh, I left them back there. Yeah, it's kind of like a fire. This is why I wanted to get this done way in advance. So I'm gonna see if I can adjust the fuel pressure regulator. Yep. Yeah, see, it's already maxed out. I can lower it, but there's just not, not enough voltage going to that pump. Uh, being only like putting out 11 and a half volts, it needs 12 plus. So I'm only hitting 32 PSI if you can see there right now. So, and that's just because that's just not a voltage going to it. Okay, so I'm gonna let this here. So now what it's going is fuel's going up, hitting the uh, pressure regulator, going right back into the tank. So it's dry and then reheat it. My big concerns, I said, were these hard lines because these, these leak, there's no way I can get to those. I mean, they're, they're buried. And I want to get this cover, um, that cover I want to get finalized, but I don't want to do it until I know everything is leak proof under here. Because if I have to go through and change those lines with that, all the, the top tunnel covers in, it's going to be a major, major struggle trying to reach up in there, run new lines, whatever I got to do. So this to me is just way better. So let me climb up underneath where the uh, fuel filter is and make sure we've got no moisture back up into there. See, totally dry there. Yeah, I've got nothing back up in there. So, as I said, a few little leaks. Okay, so I'm gonna plug this back in, and see what we get here. I can feel the transformer. Getting a little warm, a little more power and this thing's able to pump out. Now, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go back forward again. Fire drill settling down. Run about 36 PSI, give or take. I would love to pressure it up more, but it's what I've got. So I think now all my leaks are fixed. I'm not, there's a bunch of gas under there, but I think that was from earlier. I didn't wipe down. Uh, I might still have a little one down that lower one. Hard to say. So, I think we're pretty good now. I'm not seeing any more moisture. Well, so we'll call that uh, fuel fire drill. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. As you can see now, at least I know I've got no leaks. I did smoke my transformer powering the pump. But at least now I know I've got pressure. 
Um, and boy, look at this. This thing's been off for a couple of minutes and it's holding pressure. And I gotta admit, uh, let me tell you something about these fuel pressure regulators. Uh, on my Cobra, I used the kit provided, I think it was an Aeromotive unit, and it would not hold pressure at all. As soon as you turn the key off, it would bleed out. I talked to Aeromotive, and Aeromotive basically gave me that, yeah, we can't guarantee they're gonna hold pressure. It's just not the way they're meant to be. Hmm, okay. So you'd have to crank, the engine would crank for five, six seconds before it fired because it had to build up all that pressure. Even the two seconds wasn't enough because the lines were going totally empty back to the tank. So I bought one from Summit, I think by a company called Tanks, uh, Tanks Incorporated, and it held pressure great. I mean, I would go to fire it up, you'd fire it next time, one turn, boom, fired up. Pressure was there. It held pressure a long, long time. Air motors said, no, can't guarantee it. Tanks, and yet look at this. I'm at uh, 28 PSI, which this is a good way to check to make sure my lines aren't leaking either. If that starts bleeding off, then I know I've got a problem. Um, so we'll come back and check that in a little while, but I'm not seeing that drop at all. So we'll call this episode complete. So the fuel system's now got fuel in it, about four gallons. All the lines have been flushed. Uh, we've got pressure. I said we'll have to adjust the pressure once we get 12, 13 volts to it because it just wasn't enough power coming out of the transformer. And we smoked one transformer. So thanks again for watching. Appreciate it. Hit subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.